Hello guys, International Master Andrei Ostrovsky is here for the next episode of Late Friday Night's Banter Bleeds. Uh, somebody's watching football right now, uh, somebody's uh, waiting for uh, me accepting the challenge. I believe that some people do both things simultaneously. Uh, so I think uh, this time we will have uh, something like a relaxed episode. There are not so many challenges right now, so I will just uh, play one by one, I guess. Uh, by the way, in order to play against me and other banter blitzers and also to have the access to uh, all the premium features of Chess24, uh, do not forget to upgrade your account and uh, you can do this uh, cheaper using this code. All right. Uh, all watching Spain versus Portugal, big match. Oh my goodness, uh, I should have probably cancelled my banter blitz. Okay, just kidding. Um, let's play. So let's go to uh, challenges. As usual, let me know uh, what is going on to the quality of uh, the stream. Is it uh, everything okay with the sound, with the picture? Uh, would be helpful to know. So. Here we go. The first uh, challenger this time is uh, Super Bohemio. Accept. And white pieces to start with. E4. Uh, the question from Drunken Lawyer um, Andre Are you disappointed that Ukraine did not qualify? Uh, well, not really, because uh, we somehow. You know, I have serious problems uh, within our team. I don't know. Uh, what is the main reason, but the quality of uh, play actually is quite disappointing. So I was not surprised that they did not qualify. Of course, it was a bit pity, but well, the thing happened. Okay, what is going on? So French defense, queen d2, castles. Now if I castle, there is c4, so let's take on c5 first. Bishop takes c5 and now castling. Queen to a5. Okay, bishop b4 is kind of threat, right? So let's take the bishop. And here I usually play king to b1, as far as I remember. It shouldn't be a bad move, right? It shouldn't be a bad move. Rook to d8. Now, what if I just play knight to b5? There is knight to e4, unpleasant thing. So maybe it makes sense to start with what? With bishop d3, but then knight goes to b4. It's not entirely clear. Knight to d4 is a good move, I think. Very typical one. So let's put it there. Just blockading d5 pawn and like waiting for black's response mainly. So why I actually consider it knight to b5, because as we may notice, d6 square is quite weak. Would be nice to occupy it with the knight in general. a6, preventing that. All right. So now we can forget about getting to b5. Can we somehow use the queen on a5, for example, if we take on c6, bc6, then knight takes d5. No, it doesn't work. Queen takes d2. There is nothing. Um, knight takes d5 immediately. Just rook d5 is possible, so it's also nothing. All right, let's just grab some space here on the king side. Nothing is happening anyway. For now. So why not? I mean, it shouldn't be bad. h4 with the idea of h5, maybe then h6. Another idea behind h4 is to have rook to h3. Uh, rook lift controlling the third rank, maybe taking part in 
the defense if necessary and so on okay bishop to d7 most likely preparing a b5 move i guess i can respond with the queen f2 so it's a typical prophylaxis but I mean, if queen f2, b5, I can take on c6 and take on c5, but I don't think it really stops uh, black from playing that for a long time. Maybe a3 deserves some attention. So like, creating a threat of b4. Well, let's try this a3 move. I don't think it is the best one, but it shouldn't be bad again. Okay, so Portugal 2, Spain 1, says Giovanni. Wow. So Portugal is winning, right? Okay, it would be nice if you guys would have a chance to update me on the score. <laughs> so, Rook C8, uh, what about just taking on C6 and playing B4? Does it make sense? So, like winning the piece but there will be an attack on the other hand i have rook h3 resource to protect my knight c3 so let's calculate knight takes c6 most likely rook takes c6 b4 queen takes a3 bc5 what is this uh rook takes c5 rook h3 this is very risky then rook goes to a5 i don't like it at all so let's just put rook on h3 I mean, my idea is simple, to overprotect the knight on c3, to prevent any sort of sacrifices of the exchange there. And maybe now I have a sort of plan before at some point. Let's see. Giovanni says, stream is fine, sound, video, okay. So I have a feeling that we have some delay in comments on chat. Because I asked that question like... many minutes ago oh that's bad all right b5 was played so now this knight to c6 looks very logical rook takes c6 b4 attacking the queen queen takes a3 then i have even knight to d5 move even this idea may be interesting there okay let's try this i'm not sure that it's good but For now, it looks very tempting to try something like this. So maybe I'm missing something simple against it, but... Don't know. Let's see. I think after queen takes a3, there is also an idea of just taking on b5, in fact, with the knight. And if queen a4, then there is even rook to a3, surprisingly trapping the queen. So maybe I will win something more than just a piece. So knight takes b5, queen h3 takes h3. Wow, it's interesting. I guess I don't blunder anything. So b4 is protected. Now the queen has attacked twice. The knight is still under pressure on c5. Okay, knight to e4. Does it change anything if I just play queen to e1 here? This may change something. Okay, so let's take on a3 with the knight. And now I have extra minor piece. Simply extra minor piece, but some problems with the time, right? 55 seconds. This is not very, not very cool, but I have a feeling that it should be enough to convert this advantage. I think d4 was black's best option there. Now I'll just blockade this pawn till the rest of the game. Okay, grabbing the space, just keeping on playing positional chess. Right, now it's time to move the king away. Maybe to bring it to a4. Interesting position there. Okay, so first let's attack g7. Okay, what's the plan? What's the plan? Let's put the king on a4 first. 
and then we will see. Probably just preparation of the f5 should be okay. Bishop on f1 is still there, I mean, um, occupy an initial position, which is interesting, but I think it's it's completely okay. So, we're getting closer, we're getting closer, let's just try to simplify a position. It's a serious simplification, I mean, like... Oops, all right, I was in time. I was in time fast enough to win the game. So, I would say that uh, Black somehow missed my idea of playing B4. So after A3, I think it was the time for Black to uh, decide what to do with the Knight C5. So maybe Knight A4 or Knight C E4. Okay, Rook A to C8 was not a bad move. But after Rook to H3, when I uh, protected the Knight on C3, I was definitely ready to take on c6 and to play b4, so now it was the time to prevent that threat. And uh, it was possible to do with the help of, say, uh, knight to a4 move. I think it's okay, absolutely, for black. Uh, it was also possible just to go away with the queen, but it looks like a waste of time, so I would have played knight to a4. Because I think after b5, it's already quite quite annoying so I definitely win some material after this knight takes b5 and uh, queen a4 I have this resource work to a3 um, and I don't think that knight e4 changes something because um, I can just go away with with the queen but maybe this order of moves was actually better for black than immediate knight e4 because after that um, I simply had extra minor piece in this particular case probably black still has some tricks so let's say if I want to win the queen, I have to move my queen to e1. It looks very dangerous. Uh, now something like taking on b5. And after rook takes a4, taking on a4 with the bishop. So position is absolutely unclear. I mean, taking on c2 is a threat, uh, knight to c3 is a threat. Well, so maybe there was a re refutation of my idea. So knight to e4, completely unclear. I mean, rook takes a4, then knight e2 check, rook takes d2, now taking on b5 probably with the bishop, exchanging uh, the bad French bishop, so takes b5, takes b5, rook goes to a5, rook goes to c4, well, what maybe is even worse here, I wouldn't be surprised. So yeah, queen a4 deserves serious attention here. Queen a4 and then knight to e4. Nice resource. So, most likely after queen takes a3, I should have captured on c5. Uh, where after, mm, I have extra minor piece, but position remains very complicated after queen takes c5 most likely or maybe it's not that complicated i don't know what if i just play queen d4 so yeah that is just a position with two pawns uh is a material compensation for missing minor piece uh, but feels like i have enough resources to protect my king so rook h3 was very important in the sense of this defense so yeah, taking on c5 was better for white than uh, playing knight to b5. All right, uh, next one is the drunken lawyer, except. So I have good chances because drunken lawyer is definitely watching the match. Let's see. 2-3 for Spain now. Wow, it's dramatic. It's dramatic. I'm probably missing like the best match of the group stage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what is going on here? I'm just up at pawn, right? 
strange choice. I'm just up a pawn here. I have enough time to save my king and to prevent the activation of the light screwed bishop. So clearly, I'm better here. Like a typical situation for exchanged variation of uh, Rui Lopez or Berlin, but with the extra pawn for white. What can be what can be better for white than this? All right, let's keep on developing pieces. Knight e2, intending something like knight to c4. Okay, bishop goes away. Knight c4 is absolutely acceptable. I also think that b3 looks nice just to put the bishop on b2. So, as we may notice, except for f2 pawn, all others are on light squares, limiting the bishop c8, which is a typical strategy when you give up your bishop for the knight, uh, you have to put your pawns on the squares of that color just to limit the opponent's bishop to compensate uh, the missing bishop of yours. Okay, knight h7, let's say, rook to e1, just normal move. Uh, knight to g5. Okay, so the point is if I take on g5, queen takes, and there is bishop h3 threat, which is not necessarily that dangerous, but... Um, what if I take anyway, knight g5, queen g5, knight f3, queen goes to g6, knight goes to e5 there, uh, queen goes to g5, queen to c1, just simplifying the things. Let's try that. I mean, I don't see any danger behind it. Oh, queen h7, I mean, all right, all right. So now I have a good square for my queen, I think, on f3. It's quite active. So let's put it here. Bishop d6. Okay, so let's maneuver the knight. It's under slight pressure, so let's put it on g4, for example. Why not? Maybe then knight to e3, knight to f5. There are also some ideas of using this f6 square, but after queen g6 it will be quite, quite hard. Okay, now what? There is also an idea of just playing in the center, like d4, c4, this sort of play. I first want to put my knight on e3 to control central squares, maybe intended knight f5 at some point, and so forth. A rook to d8. Okay. So black is just waiting, right? Let's centralize the pieces. Also activating everything that is possible to activate and hope for some pawn play in the center. Or maybe it's also an interesting idea to try like g3, queen g2, f4, it's not that simple because h3 will be hanging there. It's maybe not hanging, like uh, if I play g3, bishop h3, there is g4, uh, trapping the bishop. So maybe g3 is possible, then queen to g2, and then f4. This looks also interesting to try. Mm, I'm completely not sure in the quality of this action, but... 
I'm tempted to try. So bishop takes h3, g4, probably just winning the bishop. Yeah, now I wanted to put my queen here, preparing f4. Queen h5, attacking h3. This is annoying. Probably forces me to play g4. And now I think that maybe it was not that bad, because now I have knight f5 for sure. But I have to be careful, because after knight f5, bishop f5, g5, there is an idea of taking on f5, but then I checkmate the king after queen g7. So knight f5 is possible here. Let's try it. That's interesting. So queen g2 is forced, king g2, position is simplified. I have very good looking pawns here. Although uh, one of them is... Uh, two of them are doubled. <laughs> okay, but now we have a very clear plan of exerting pressure along the g-file for some time. As you may notice, I'm not in a rush to convert my extra pawn. I'm just trying to use some drawbacks in black's position. All right. Second rook goes to the g file. Now I have an idea of playing uh, bishop to c1 with the threat of bishop takes h6, or maybe just bishop to h6, in fact. So we will see what black will do here. h6 is hanging for sure now. Okay. Now I have different ideas. So bishop h6 is interesting, but I don't think I get anything after king f8. Another idea is just to go away with the king, then play f4. I think this is something very logical, given that the bishop is on e5. Let's go. And now it's possible to play what? Bishop to e3? Yep. And here's a good question, to take on d4 or not to take on d4? There's also an idea of playing king d2, then c3, forcing the bishop to take on e3, uh, which enables then d4 and e5 play. Yeah, that is that is a good way to do that. b5, just c3. And now my pawns start moving. So as you can see, black is tied by this g7 pawn. Oh, that is nice. It's very pleasant to see such a position. Okay, let's attack something here. Now this should be almost a checkmate, right? Yeah, it should be just a checkmate very soon. Here it is. Checkmate. Checkmate. So, there is nothing to discuss, basically, because, uh, well, I was a pawn up right uh, after the opening stage, so I would say that uh, Castling is already a mistake. Where, where, so, a6, yeah, a6 move is a strange choice. So, bishop c5 is the main line, preventing immediate capture on e5. Uh, I anyway take on c6 in that case, but at least I don't win the pawn. Okay, so uh, the drunken lawyer says football's fault. Yeah, I expected that because you actually mentioned this possibility uh, right at the beginning of the show. 
let us continue. Uh, Shelling Ford is the next. Okay, have not played for ages, I suppose. And Shelling is most likely not watching football, so I will have a hard time. So we have we have what we have Benoni pawn structure reversed. So how to play this? As far as I remember, it's usually a good idea to get rid of uh, at least one minor piece to have no problems with coordinating the rest of them. That's why Bishop G five. Let's take this one. Okie dokie. Now rook to e1 looks natural. And e5. So preparing bishop to f5. So knight to d2, say knight to c5, queen goes to e2. Maybe queen goes to e2 right now, just to exert some pressure on e5 already. And then knight to d2. In that case, I like... Don't spend a lot of time on protecting this d3 pawn. There is also a possibility just to play knight d2, and if knight c5, something like knight to e4, Knight e4, rook e4, f5, or goes back. e4 is not ready. e4 is just uh, premature. So maybe I can do something like this. Exchanging some more pieces, and then at some point my knight from f3 will go to d2. I will exert some pressure with the help of my bishop g2, and so on. All right, f6 over protecting e5. Now I think it's a good idea for me to try to prepare b4, but I probably don't have a chance to do that. So if I play rook to b1, a3 is hanging, right? What about knight h4 here? It doesn't create a threat, I believe. So knight goes to c5, then check on d5. Uh, it's nothing, most likely. But at the same time, it's, it's something very typical. Maybe knight e4, just provoking black to play f5. Control and c5 square. Maybe it's a bad idea, I don't know. But I think f5 slightly weakens e5, so it will simplify my, my counterplay. Let's see. Oh, g5. That is something strange. That is something strange. It's too aggressive. Maybe black is overestimating his position. I have a feeling that it's too much. To play like this but who knows maybe it's okay maybe it's okay so g4 is hanging now which is a pleasant fact And the thing is, I'm better developed at the moment. So I don't believe it is very good for black to play like this. So to put the knight on g5 or not. Knight g5, probably knight to c5, bishop d5, check. King goes away. Uh, unclear. Let's go back to d2.
let's go back to d2. So now e5 is my object of attack, but it's quite hard to attack, in fact, because it is overprotected for now. So I should prepare b4 somehow, but again, it's not so simple. I have to be careful about ideas like f4 followed by f3 just burying my bishop somewhere. Okay, queen to g7. Looks very dubious. So let's put the rook on b1, just preparing b4. After f4, I always have some like bishop d5 check, so it shouldn't be that dangerous, I believe. So let's protect d3. Also, probably creating a sort of just taking on c6 and taking on e5. Not sure. Uh, and another idea was just to play b4. Can I play b4 now? I guess yes. So it was prepared. But knight goes to a4, something that I missed. <laughs> it was a very simple move, just creating a threat of knight to c3. Yeah, this is this is bad for me. Okay, what about rook a1? probably just too much to play like this but I'm still better developed so maybe I can afford uh, this sort of play all right let's go b5 now there is no chance queen f1 looks terrible Now I think there is no other move, so I have to take, at least to try to justify all this. Bishop takes b5. All right, so let's take it. Let's bring the knight to the game. Things are getting very complicated now. Very complicated stuff. It's a bunch of threats. Pawn structure is worse. So black has better better chances here, I think. Okay, what about this sort of thing? Does it give me anything or not? Well, wow, position is just very complicated. Okay, rook f5, ed3. I don't know what is going on anymore. d2 is amazing threat. Knight g4 is possible. Well, too many things to consider. So check. Now let's take this, I guess. Just the most annoying pawn. Check now what to do. Knight f one ninety two king g two. I think I'm still fine. Oops, that was a final blunder. Fortunately, it was not my blunder. Okay, so very complicated game as usual against Lucas. So very complicated position. I have a feeling that at the very end, after rook a five, e d three was possible exactly here. Oh no, I'm probably wrong, because after that I take on d5, and if d2, the move I was afraid of the most, here is just rook t takes d4. No, it doesn't work. Uh, but what if after rook takes d5, this knight takes on d5? Now I control d2, 
no, it, it doesn't work for sure. Yeah. So it was just a hallucination. All right, so rook a5 was completely playable. So the point behind this move was that queen is a bit overloaded here, so it has to protect both b7 square because I want to play b7 and f5 at the same time. But I believe there was a possibility to play something like queen d7 maybe, and it should be okay for black. Uh, again, these knights are super aggressive here, very active, and there is a threat of this taken on d3. On the other hand, maybe I can just take on e4, maybe that is the best resource for me at some point point maybe exactly here maybe a bit later I don't know but uh, what I definitely did wrong is uh, this b4 it's actually uh, made the game very interesting and spectacular but from a pure positional point of view it was probably a mistake I completely forgot about this knight a4 knight c3 what a shame I mean it's so typical idea on the other hand if I don't have this I am probably just worse so probably b4 was forced okay given the knight uh, this c3 square but um, having also some some play so here maybe even knight b4 was possible I'm not sure but looks absolutely playable creating sort of knight c2 and black should should be all right after all this crazy pawn play on the king side black is completely okay mm. Yeah, what is interesting after knight c3, I wanted just to, to take on a8, not even go into f1, that was possible, of course. But I wanted to take on a8 and to play this position, in which case I thought I would have some chances. But this knight on h2 is super ugly. I mean, probably just bishop d7 is fine for black. No, it's probably incorrect. It's probably incorrect, and after knight c3, I have to go queen f1 anyway. But then knight takes b4 simply, just winning the pawn. I mean, after taking on a1, taking it b4. Yeah, most likely knight c3 here was the most the most uh, ambitious move. Like grabbing the queen. Yeah, what will have some sort of compensation, but I, I don't think it it is sufficient because of this knight on h2. Anyway, thank you very much for this game. That's, uh, yeah, something. So, uh, next one is Duke Crusher. At the very beginning of the show, Duke Crusher said that um, it would be the first game uh, in month. So, he didn't play against me for a long, long time. So, let's do it. E6, okay. French defense now. We're just playing French defense with the inclusion of strange moves from both sides. So I played f3 and bishop e3, and black played b6 and bishop b7. Who benefits from it? I have no idea. It's important not to blunder something connected with the queen h4 check. So a3 looks stupid now to me. Because black has a chance to play knight e7, knight f5. Then taking on, no, taking on d4 and queen h4 is probably not playable because of bishop f2. f6 looks quite good. Yeah. Black is doing well here, I would say. I should have played something like f4 instead of a3. Um, okay, now I have no choice. I think I have to play f4. And this looks terrible, simply terrible. But at least I control f6 square, so black cannot activate his pieces easily. Knight to h6 is very good here. <laughs> you know, because if I take on h6, there's queen h4 check. Very annoying stuff. So I guess I cannot prevent uh, knight f5. 
So let's just put the knight on f3. Bishop f2. So d4 is protected sufficiently. And this means I can play knight to c3, bishop to d3. Which move is better? Probably bishop to d3. Knight d4, knight d4, knight d4, bishop d4, queen h4 check, bishop goes back to f2. All right, bishop d3 is possible. You know, now this a3 move looks quite logical. Because without that, bishop d3 is complicated. But now it looks very nice. But I don't think I have anything specific in this position. But bishop on b7 is quite bad for now, which is nice. a5, very natural move intended bishop to a6. So how to prevent it correctly? I think knight to c3, bishop a6 and something like knight to b5, at least grabbing the bishop if black wants to get rid of the French bishop. I mean saving my light squared one on the board. I guess it's fine. It shouldn't be bad idea in general. <laughs> so there is a nice discussion on chat about the um, probability of the challenge from Oli. Yeah, I think it's highly unlikely that Oli will challenge me. Rook to see it. Okay, so now I have pair of bishops, which is nice stuff. How to use these guys? Uh, light squared one should play a decisive role at some point. So first of all, I'm somehow tempted to play uh, queen d2, then maybe rook to c1. That is kind of planned for me. Let's try it. Oh, queen a4 was probably an interesting option. So queen a4, and if knight a7, then bishop d7. Wow, I missed that resource. What is interesting, I was thinking of e6 pawn, but somehow missed queen a4. Queen a4 was the strongest move there. Because if black wants to go away with the knight and prevent d7, the knight should occupy b8 position, which is super ugly. Where after I just play rook c1, it's just a temple action. And if black protects the knight somehow with the queen, it also looks ugly after rook c1, next move. Wow, queen a4 was super move. Oh my goodness. And Portugal against Spain, 3-3. Nice. Real drama. Just like in my game against Sheldon Ford. <laughs> Maybe even uh, more cruel. Okay, rook c1 now looks possible. g5 square is controlled, so bishop g5 isn't a threat. And now to take on c8 or to play bishop a6. Bishop a6 is a bit strange. I'll just go away with the bishop to d3, in fact. Q4 
queen to d7. Okay, now let's take And can I play g4? Because after queen d7, there is no knight h4 anymore. I think I'm just winning some material, right? Just trapping the knight. I was thinking about this move for a long time, but it was always possible to put the knight on h4. But after queen went to d7, there is no knight h4 anymore, so I just win the knight. Crowning students, if Oli challenges, please play him, Andre. Oli will not challenge, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, g4. But there may be a situation that uh, I'm just running out of challenges. Uh, I have a feeling that there are not so many left to accept. Okay, knight d6, e d6. The thing is, I attack the bishop, so if rook f3, I just take on e7. So I'm anyway a minor piece up. And there is no compensation, obviously. There is no compensation. Okay, e5, the last chance. Uh, g4 is under attack. It's not necessarily that dangerous. Moreover, I have this bishop f5 move, which is strong. And now it's just extra rook. Extra rook, some pawns. Yeah. Should be just over somehow. Where is the checkmate? I have no idea, so let's just take on c8. Oh. Is there a perpetual? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's just protect all the squares from where perpetual was potentially possible and win the game. All right, so there was a blunder. I just played g4. Very instructive blunder, by the way. Uh, when the knight is on f5, in fact, you should always think of the possibility uh, like g4. Uh, and it wasn't that great for white when the queen was on d8, because whenever you play g4, there is knight h4 move. But once queen goes away from there, of course, there is g4 move that traps the knight. And there is nothing uh, for black to compensate that loss. But what I missed here was actually uh, the move queen to a4. That was a great resource for white. So now if knight goes to a7, there is bishop to d7 with a great advantage because b5 doesn't work. Uh, if I take on b5, of course, black will have a serious compensation. I will have very stupid bishop on f2 and so on. But I just take on e6 here. And after king goes away, I just go away with my queen. And the rook is still hanging there. And I won very important pawn. Maybe I'm overestimating my position here, but come on. After rook c6, bishop f5, rook f5. It's just the same, but with the extra pawn for, for white. So it should be convertible. Yeah, probably black is not completely lost here, but it's very close to that. So queen a4 was very nice. Uh, I mean, the point that if knight goes to b8, look at this knight on b8. It's completely limited, and now I just play this rook to c1. I have a tremendous advantage, I think, positional one. So this bishop on b5 is just... Uh, just, just a god, you know, controlling everything. And uh, it's no longer a question for me that I uh, occupy the C file gradually. I have still this advantage in space and uh, this E6 is constantly weak and so on. So most likely black did something wrong uh, here after F4, I don't know. Uh, maybe F takes E5 here was premature. I guess knight to H6 prior to taking on e5 or something was more interesting to try. Uh, and, but maybe there is no difference, in fact. I can still play this knight to f3, knight to f5, I just go away, knight to g4, bishop g1, then h3 and bishop can come back. So who knows, maybe, maybe it's fine for white in any case here. Maybe taking on d4 was premature. No, a3 looks strange. I would have played maybe a5 as black. 
So prevent him before and preparing this bishop a6 already. And as you can see with the pawn on c3, I don't have a real chance to prevent this bishop a6 move to cover this diagonal, which means black has great chances to get rid of this bad bishop. So yeah, it looks absolutely playable for black. Just a5 and then bishop a6. Yeah, if the bishops are exchanged, I think it's just a good version of, of French for black. All right, thanks for the game anyway. Uh, let's have a look at the situation with challenges. So Fuchs Rudel is the next accept. And white pieces again, e4. Sicilian now. Okie dokie, let's play Sicilian. Which line? E5 immediately. All right. Kalashnikov. No, Leventhal. So A6, Knight to D6. Bishop takes, Queen takes. And queen f6. All right, I know that queen c7 is a tricky and probably the most uh, promising move, but um, I tend to play something like this. Very simple line, which is, in my opinion, absolutely playable, especially when you play blitz, right? And black castle, that is interesting. So black didn't even play this standard d5 followed by knight b4. Or knight b4 followed by d5. So maybe it makes sense for me to prevent it. I have a 3 move, but uh, I don't think I, I really need it. So probably bishop g5 is even better. Uh, just preparing castle and lawn. Also intending to take on f6 maybe and to put the knight on d5. Typical positional idea. Let's try it. And that goes to h5. That is very strange. I mean, this play looks very dubious to me. So now I have no problems with occupying d5 square. Let's do it right now. That was basically the plan. So now it feels like I have an improved version of Sveshnikov. Because not only uh, do I occupy this perfect square with the knight and d5, but also I have pair of bishops and I don't see a great compensation for black, to be completely clear here, to be completely honest. Now after f6, this knight on h5 is completely misplaced. So I'm going to play like bishop e2, maybe g4 as well. So I control f4 square twice. I can do both. To know which one is better both look like absolutely normal continuation so g4 knight f4 i just take on f4 take on f4 i'm a pawn up I'm just a pawn up do i have anything better so knight b6 knight takes c8 there's also a possibility i don't know so i'm probably even not in a rush so let's let's start with just castling Okay, now bishop is away. I can play knight b6 and take on d7. Okay, again, I don't I don't feel like I'm in a rush to do that. So let's let's start with protecting e4 pawn. Then some pawn at, at some point I just play g4, knight f4, I take on f4, but my pawn on e4 is protected. Of course, black can play g6 now. Uh, we can in position even more. And in that case, I will probably grab d7. I'll just play knight b6 and take on d7. Very hard position for black to play. Maybe I will even start with the g4 
attacking the knight and forcing it to g7 to prevent knight f4 or something, and then knight b6, knight d7. Do know. Everything looks very good for white here. Black's position is just terrible. It's just terrible. Too many weaknesses were created. So now, do I need this knight on g7 or let it be on h5? So knight b6, knight takes d7 looks good. Immediately or after g4, I don't know. Let's put the pawn on g4, grabbing the space. Maybe I will have additional plan like h4, h5 later. If I play bishop c5, or it goes to f7, so I don't win this f6 one. So let's go there. Let's just go there and win that pawn. Now I think rook f7 is the only move where after I just put the knight on c5, which looks like a good position. I exert pressure on b7 on a6 and also control e6 preventing knight g7 from going there. And now I'm a pawn up in addition to all the advantages. Knight to d4. Okay, now I think it makes sense to simplify the things by taking on d4 because I don't really want to protect my f3 pawn passively. So let's just take it. Now a4 looks very tempting. Because if b takes a4, there is bishop c4. If not, well, there is a problem. For black, now I think I have a5, right? Just to fix the weakness on a6. Does it make sense or not? Or it's just absolutely unnecessary? What if I just take on a6? Taking on a6 is better. <laughs> because b5 is hanging now, and if b takes a4, then bishop c4. Still. <sighs> It's a bit strange, but I'm playing without the rook and the bishop here. But now bishop gets to play with a decisive effect. So takes on f7 and wins. And then finally my rook will take part in the game. I will most likely come back with the knight to um, c5. Let's say after taking here. And here, just protecting e4. Because obviously I couldn't play e5 or e takes f5 in the view of bishop takes f3. So e4 should be protected. Now I have a threat of rook f1, by the way. So black is forced to play king f8, I think. Now, now let's take. And it's time to centralize the king. It's time to centralize the king. Let's give this check. That was, by the way, unnecessary. Absolutely. Unnecessary. This is also unnecessary. <laughs> no, I started, I started playing like a pattern now. A bit. So let's focus. Uh, Let's attack this pawn. And now this one. So now two are hanging <clears throat> and the bishop cannot protect both simultaneously. So one of them drops. Okay. 
it's over now. So <clears throat> this rook to f1 check, although uh, it looked very tempting, was inaccurate. So I guess uh, if I wanted to save the pawn e4, I should have captured on e6. And then I have king d3 move. On the other hand, after king e5, e4 is hanging. And if I play something like rook to e1, there's bishop b5. King goes back to d2. Well, yeah, maybe rook f1 was absolutely fine here. In fact, white has different ways to win this. So position is absolutely winning already here. So if you play this line after uh, knight to c3, obviously you have to, to try d5, e d5, and knight to b4. That's the main idea here. Or knight b4 first and then d5. Because if you castle, you give me very valuable tempo. But still, after bishop g5, I think something like uh, knight to d4 deserved attention. Definitely not knight to h5. So now you attack c2. Let's say a castle. Um, and now you have some tricks based on this knight to g4 jump. Attacking f2, uh, creating a sort of winning the exchange. On the other hand, um, I can simply play something like rook d2, I believe. Or maybe even bishop h4. Yeah, bishop h4 is better. And at some point I will just put the knight on d5, we'll play f3 or h3. So anyway, long term, white's position is better here. So the only point of weakening the position that much, I mean, giving up d5 square and giving up the bishop of a dark color, uh, is to have this country play based on d5 and knight b4. Otherwise, white has just a super improved version of uh, Sveshnikov pawn structure, which is very pleasant. All right, thank you for this game. Uh, next one is, uh, yeah, this nickname is very hard to pronounce, so I'll just accept without saying anything. <laughs> so I am uh, playing as black. Feels like the very first game with black pieces this time. Right or not? I don't remember. Knight to f3, bishop b7. b3, castles. So, very famous Tabia. Now, should I take on c4 and play c5? I guess it's fine. Let's try it. And now c5, right? So now potentially black has a better pawn structure. Yeah, after this move, 100%, I guess. Just CD4, C4 is isolated. And after this CD4, almost inevitably we will exchange light squared bishops, which is very nice. Because usually this bishop on G2 is very annoying and it's a big pleasure to exchange it for the bishop, not for. Uh, well, exchanging it for the knight would be even better, of course, but there is no uh, possibility of this kind. All right. Now, I think it's logical just to start the attack against c4 immediately with the rook c8. Also covering c7 and c6 squares that are a bit weakened. I'm not sure I can take on c4 here because of knight b5. And position is unpleasant there. So rook c1, rook c1, creating a threat of rook c8, and knight c7 is still a threat. So most likely it's better for me to uh, complete a development first prior to attacking anything in white's camp. So candidate moves are knight to c6, simplifying position even more, or maybe just knight to d7, heading to c5, or e5, attacking this c4. So knight bd7, let's say if knight b5, I can play a6, forcing the knight to a3 most likely. And then knight to e5 looks like winning a pawn. Yeah, let's play knight b to d7. I guess there are no problems whatsoever for black in this position. But there is a big question if I can achieve more than just super comfortable equality. 
We will see. So I have a feeling that I lost the chat. So let's just uh, refresh, refresh the page. Or maybe the chat was stuck. I'm not sure. So that goes to a4 instead of going to b5 because true on b5 there is nothing to do. After a6, the knight is forced to super ugly position on a3, and after knight e5, I would have uh, got this c4 sooner or later. After knight a4, attack against c4 is not so simple, because if I play knight to e5 now, there is knight to e6 tactics, f takes e6, bishop e5. But after knight takes e6, nothing is under attack except for my knight on e5, so maybe I have intermediate knight takes c4. The knight on e6 is under attack. If it goes away, I have sort of b5 idea. This may be just the most straightforward and the most convincing way of uh, transforming the position. I don't know. Let's try it. So c4 is under attack. White has to make a decision. Yeah, knight takes e6 looks like a move. Obviously now I want to take on c4 with the knight. There is of course bishop takes f6, bishop f6, but in that case I have a bishop against the knight and two against one on the queen side, which is nice. After knight f4, I can play b5 even. Isn't it an improved version for me? I expected something like bishop f6. Now I think I have this resource. If knight goes away, I just take the bishop, that's the point. And if bishop f6, bishop f6, this knight is seriously limited, so the only move is knight to c3, where after I have knight d2 winning some material. So white is in trouble for sure. White is in trouble. I'm definitely winning some material. The question is if it's simple to convert, but I think it, it's fine. It should be fine. Rook takes c4. Right, after rook takes c4 and rook takes c4, the knight is completely trapped, so it's it's very strange move. I think knight to c3 was the only move. Now the knight has no moves to go away. All right. So, uh, the very first moment here after uh, dc4, bc4, and c5, I think uh, e3 is a move. <clears throat> just giving me a chance to take on d4, but then recapturing with the pawn, <clears throat> having at least a uh, hanging pawn. So it's a very dynamic setup. But I believe that black has no problems here as well. So very clear plan of attacking these guys uh, on c4 and d4, gradually improving the position and so on. Uh, so the typical thing here is uh, actually to play e3. And then after dc4, bc4, we have this well-known tabia. Um, if I'm not mistaken, last week uh, I played that against somebody. 
and uh, well, it's it's an interesting thing to try. So you can uh, examine some games of uh, top level guys. It's very popular position. So uh, because uh, you know after this exchanges, I have very simple play like rook c8 and. Come on, what to do with that pawn? So after knight d7, if uh, knight goes to b5, I wanted to play a6. As we may notice, I control just all the squares. And if knight goes to a3, I can play this knight to e5, intending to take your knight and to take on c4. And here this idea doesn't work at all, because I can just take on e6. And if bishop takes c5, bishop takes a3 within the minor piece. That is what I calculated, basically. Um, but uh, what if you play f4 here? This doesn't look very good for white, to be honest, because you weaken a lot. And after bishop takes a3, I think I'm much better. Takes here, takes here. Yeah, this is winning for black easily. If you take on a3, I just take on c4, and then knight e3 is a threat. So it's also very bad for you. Uh, so you played probably not that bad move, knight to a4. But then after knight e5, knight e6, and knight to c4, I believe you should have... Um... Okay, if you capture on f6, it's basically the same, right? So it's inevitable, more or less. But I thought you would play knight to d4, preventing b5. That is what I consider the main line. And here I wanted just to take on b2, and uh, to play this position, in which I think black should be slightly better. But maybe it's nothing specific, because your knight goes to d3 after that, I have very solid position in the center and my pawns are not necessarily that dangerous at least right now because they're not moving so you know so maybe taking here playing bishop to a3 deserves some attention but that is nothing you just play rook c2 yeah that was probably the most uh, promising continuation for you just knight to d4 pre pre prevented b5 so that's the thing after knight to f4, I have very simple play. So I just play b5. This is forced. Here I expect it, obviously, knight to c3. But after that, I just play knight to d2. And I thought the best chance for white is to take on b5. Then I take on f1. Rook takes f1. And this position, well, it should be lost for white, obviously. It should be lost. But still requires some technique. Uh, while rook c4 is just lost immediately. All right. Uh, let's continue. Uh, next one is Dark Moon, except and black pieces again. E4, E5. So what is this? Roy Lopez. All right, here we go. No capture on C6. Most likely we are going to enter the main line. d4 d4 here is it really possible uh, on the other hand why not so most likely if i take on d4 takes d4 takes d4 c3 is intended right sacrificing the pawn and so forth okay but isn't it that after bishop g4 What is more or less forced to play c3, where after it just castle, and we have a transposition to one of these well known theoretic lines. Yeah, bishop on g4 is protected, so there is probably no bishop f7 or something. So it should be fine for black to play like that. And castles. Here we are. So white wanted to play a gambit, but I decided not to accept it simply. And now we have a transposition to a famous line. So let me remember, uh, queen c6 or knight c6, which one is better? Both are logical, but I think uh, queen c6 is slightly more harmonious because of knight c4 possibility at some point. And I also coordinate my rooks already. H3. Now let's add bishop e6. Oh 
All right, so there is a simple idea of just playing knight to e3, then uh, knight to h2, knight g4. It's a typical plan, but I think I'm fine here. So let's first of all prevent knight g5. Knight g5, one move ago was possible, but then bishop d7 followed by h6. For now, I want to prevent not really knight g5, but bishop g5 fighting for this d5 square after knight to f1. So we have something very simple, uh, similar, sorry, um, to neither of pawn structures and uh, Sveshnikov and all this stuff. So this idea is with bishop g5 followed by bishop f6 are very typical. Now what? Rook to c8 and tendon b4 is one typical idea. Another one is rook to d8, rook to e8, bishop f8, and then at some point d5 is another one. So what to play? Which one to choose? Let's start with the rook to c8. Many years ago, I actually played lots of uh, Bleeds games featuring this position. Not exactly this one, but this type of position. That was so long ago. In the real tournament practice, it never happened uh, to me, or maybe only once in the tournament there was a competition uh, between some boys and girls under 13 or something at my local chess club that was so long ago a4 looks very strange because i have knight to b3 now it was possible one move ago when the bishop was on c2 now it's definitely a mistake so let's put the knight on b3 Maybe it's not a terrible mistake, but it makes my position definitely much more pleasant than before. Rook to a7, okay. So now I have even knight c1, queen c1, b4. Very tempting. So let's do it. Because pawn is pinned. I guess it's a, it's a good idea to get rid of my own weakness and to create a weakness in the opponent's camp. So, the ideal case of minority attack here. <clears throat> Rook to b1 was passive, but probably the best. At least to prevent this play. Because in my opinion, it's very unpleasant. And this is probably another blunder, so I just take here. And now I have e4. I think e4 wins a piece. Right? Right. Because if knight d4, then queen b6. And rook on a7 is hanging. Or maybe queen c5. I don't know which one is better. If I play queen b6, there is rook a6. Queen d4, c d4, rook c1, rook c1, e d4. I have two minor pieces. I have two minor pieces against the rook. But anyway, queen c5 is more accurate, I believe. Right? Right. Bishop b5. Okay, let's just take the rook. It's simply extra material, I mean, extra minor piece, no compensation. No compensation. Let's take here. I'm okay to give up this pawn on b4 after knight c6. <clears throat> I believe that this e4 pawn is much more valuable asset. Oh, 
All right, queen c5, cb4, right? <clears throat> queen c1, rook c1 is unclear. So it's better just to put it on b6, I think. Okay. And now just d5. Activating the bishop. Should be just completely lost for white, right? Right. White is still playing, though. So I have to be careful. <laughs> Blockading the pawn, now taking it. Immediate capture was a bit risky, I think. It was not, in fact, so it's just over-cautiousness. All right, so something wrong happened after a4. That is basically the first and uh, the most noticeable mistake here. So knights of b3, a b5, a b5. Rook a7 is the another inaccuracy. So it's it was just like a downward spiral. So rook to b1 was, was important. Maybe not very pleasant to make such a move, but at least here I don't have immediate b4. So it's still far away from clarity. It's a playable position for white. I mean, black is probably uh, enjoying the situation on the board and uh, has slightly better chances already, having a pair of bishops and uh, some plans of playing before at some point, or maybe even uh, more plausible to do something like connected to d6, d5. But it's uh, not like after rook a7, because now I just take here and play before. And come on, feels like I'm just winning the material or something very close to that I don't know so the only way to support the pawn c3 is to play some like knight e2 but it's very passive and in that case I have knight takes c4 I think so it's it's already quite hard position for white but knight f5 is definitely one more mistake and probably the decisive one after that it's over so I'm just winning the material so uh, most likely even here instead of playing bishop d3 you could have done something better uh, let's say let me second yeah, here after rook a to c8. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that b4 is a threat because you can take on b4 and then take my knight. So probably you could have played a4 right now. And if I play b4, you just take. After this, you probably take. I take, you take on a5, you're a pawn up right now. But I probably have a good counterplay here. Because uh, pawn is doubled and this pawn on b2 is under pressure, so I can put my bishop on b3 at any point of time. I can play just rook b8, I can probably just play bishop d8 if I want, but then b4. Yeah, so most likely I should start with this move and then bishop d8 and so forth. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe b4 was already a threat. What is a typical uh, way of uh, preventing all this stuff? I don't remember, but I think that uh, it was uh, much more interesting for you to try knight to h2 move with the idea of playing knight to g4, so challenging my knight f6 and fighting for d5 square. That is a typical play here. So then knight g4, if I take on g4 with the knight, then your knight through e3 goes to d5. That's the plan. And also, in many cases, in such a situation, you prepare queen to f3, also something very typical here. Uh, to exert some pressure on my knight f6. Additionally, this h6 is under pressure, and so on. All right. Uh, in any case, interesting game. Next one is uh, Ray Bilota. Accept. So, Karakan, a sideline, knight c3, knight f3. So, I'm not going to play main lines. E6, all right, now D4. Now 
knight to d7. So as far as I remember, knight f6 is a safe option. Uh, but knight d7 cannot be bad. I think it's okay. So cover an e5 square at least. All right. What about playing knight g5 now? Let's try this strange move, like exerting some pressure on f7, e6. It's most likely absolutely nothing for white, but there are some tricks, I believe. Let's try that. So, now I have some threats, like ed5, for instance, the direct one. Bishop e7. Solid move, what to say. Probably the best here. Tempting to play h4, so let's try h4, just protecting the knight. I don't want to give up such an active position, so I want black to commit at least a weakness to get rid of my knight, going away uh, voluntarily is probably completely bad idea. Okay, so after h6 at least there are some weakenings, and there are some ideas of taking on e6, maybe, then queen h5 check in a fade, but it's not, not enough for white. Unfortunately, it's not possible. So now I think I have nothing better than just retreating. Let's go away. Yeah, there is absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing, so black is probably even slightly better long term, I would say. All right, let's just play chess then. Of course, it's better to start playing chess having a better position than this one. <laughs> Knight f6 is not necessarily the better choice <coughs> if compared to bishop g4. I believe that bishop g4 is the best, in fact. The most annoying. There is one interest in line that uh, completely equalizes easily. After knight f6, of course, white has some chances. My blitz games, and not only blitz games against grandmasters, uh, prove that. So they're struggling there against me. <coughs> so. One of the recent, uh, recent uh, great games of mine against Knight of Six and Bleeds was against uh, Matthias Bluebaum. So, got absolutely winning position. And uh, only a uh, miracle helped him to make a draw. In this situation, of course, white has absolutely nothing except for problems. So it's the most the most noticeable problem is my bishop. So it's just super ugly, limited with own pawns. But probably I will like solve this problem at some point. I don't know, rook e1, rook d1, c4. At some point, I have no idea. It's very hard to play here. Carlson asks, uh, are you talking about e5, knight, e4 variation? Of course, about e5, knight, e4. Rook to c8, just preparing c5, right? Very straightforward and quite efficient thing. Right, 
Let's centralize the pieces then. Or maybe just B4 even. I don't know. Position just the one I hate. <laughs> so... Reminds me of checkers. Rook there. Okie dokie. E4 square is very annoying. Okay, let's clarify the things with the knight of six. We need four. Logical. Uh, so let's focus. What to do here? So I don't think I have. I should take it. It will be just completely bad. So let's play queen d2. But this position is already quite dubious for white. And I d5 strong, strong move. Let's fight for some files, for some squares. I don't know. Black's position is super solid here. No surprises, it's Karakan. Okay, at least I occupy e5. Sort of achievement, sort of achievement, but what is next? H4 is hanging. <laughs> I was prematurely happy about that. Let's try something connected with the b5. Maybe this will help. Or something like c4. Also looks playable. And now knight e5. Looks like some play, right? I believe it's wrong completely, but we are in a time trouble, so maybe I will have some chances there. Centralization. Centralization. Takes the queen. Nice. So I managed to win only closer to the end of the game in the mutual time trouble. So there was almost perfect play from black here. Almost perfect. I mean, very solid. It was very hard for me to achieve anything, but in the mutual time trouble, I managed to actually win because of blunders so there is basically nothing to command black plate very nice chess so most likely uh, here yeah i should have played h3 after knight d7 yeah as far as i remember it's it's the main move here h3 then castling something like that waiting for d takes c4 um but I decided to try knight g5. For, I wanted to trick my opponent. Like, if he plays h6 here, let's say, uh, there are some tricks, I believe, after, say, knight takes e6, f takes e6, queen h5, check, forcing the king to e7. But so probably I can even start with this. e takes uh, d5, and um, e6 is under attack, so cd5 is more or less forced. No, this is also just bluff. There is nothing for white. So play queen h5, just king e7, not a big deal. 
If I take on d5 here, there's at least queen a5 check and then castle and long. Yeah, that was also absolutely playable for black. I mean, immediate h6, I guess. <laughs> that was fine. All right, so this knight g5 is completely wrong. Just exchanges light squared bishops in a bad situation. Don't think it should work. And it didn't. All right, so probably the last game uh, for this episode. Because it feels like I'm running out of power. I'm running out of coffee. So let's try to play a decent game. So the previous one was just very bad from my side. I mean, opponent played good. Okay. Slow dragon. With castle and short. Knight to a5. All right, let's just put the bishop on f1. And that was stupid, actually, because the normal move was uh, knight to d5, in fact. Why didn't I play knight d5? I don't understand. That was so typical. Yeah, I'm just losing, losing my focus, for sure. Now I have some problems, I think. So playing queen to c1 looks natural now. But it no longer looks that great. Yeah, it doesn't look great at all. I mean... But I don't see anything better, so let's play queen c1. At least have an idea of playing bishop h6 at some point. Yeah, just very bad, very bad play from me. Um, just a complete disaster. Yeah, it just makes an absolutely different and uh, not very good ideas. Queen c1, yeah, probably rook to b1 was slightly better than queen to c1, but yeah. After knight a5, knight d5 should be played. That's the move. Not what I'm playing here. All right, knight to g4, position becomes very complicated for white. So knight takes e6, f takes e6, f2 is hanging, uh, knight b2 followed by bishop c3 is a great threat. What to do now? Is there a good move for me in general? I'm really in a big trouble here. So knight takes c6, f6, maybe bishop c4, rook c4. I'm already searching for a way to equalize, but maybe there is no simple way to do that. My goodness, this position is so bad. Um... Catastrophe.
Yeah, Queen B6. Very logical. Everything is just hanging here. I think that is my only move. Uh, it's a drama. <laughs> drama. Bishop on g5 is fortunately protected here. So I still have some tricks. Okay, let's take this one. Yeah, it's probably just lost. After rook takes d4, queen goes to e5. That's the point. But then I can take on c4 with the bishop. Queen h2, yeah. I mean, I'm lost anyway, so... Let us try the last chance. This is probably still lost, I mean. Twenty one seconds only, I think it's it's hopeless. Okay, decided to make a draw because 
I didn't have enough time here. Okay, this position is winning, but Black probably missed a chance to win uh, much earlier. So that is probably the most interesting game of uh, today's episode. So it was really dramatic, and uh, my opponent was very close to just winning it. All right, uh, in any case, many thanks for being with me this night and um, uh, watching this instead of watching football. Uh, hopefully you learned something new. Uh, well, if you did, I'm happy because it is the main point of uh, actually making this show and uh, the others of mine. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and other channels of mine and wish you all a great weekend. See you very, very soon. Bye-bye.